In terms of longevity, in an earlier video, we saw that serine plus vitamin B6 may be the best way to reduce homocysteine. So let's take a look at why that may be the case. So starting with dietary folic acid, that will be converted into serum levels of folate, which in combination with vitamin B12 will convert homocysteine into methionine, thereby reducing the circulating homocysteine concentration. Similarly, betaine or trimethylglycine will also convert homocysteine into methionine. But an increased methionine metabolism may be bad for longevity based on studies in animal models of methionine restriction. And if you missed that data, the video will be in the right corner. In contrast, adding serine plus vitamin B6 will convert homocysteine into cystathionine, which in combination with vitamin B6 will then convert cystathionine into cysteine, which can be incorporated into glutathione GSH. And there are a couple of videos on this channel why glutathione restoration as it declines during aging may be beneficial not just for health, but potentially longevity. And if you missed those videos, those will also be in the right corner. So with that in mind, for blood test number three in 2023, did serine, and more specifically two grams of serine per day, and vitamin B6, 11 milligrams per day, and note that that 11 milligrams per day was about three and a half times higher than my previous average of three milligrams per day, did that combination reduce homocysteine? So for test number two, homocysteine was 11.1 micromolar. And for test number three, it was a little bit better at 10.1 micromolar. So is this progress or just normal variation? And the reason I raise that issue is because when we see how my homocysteine levels have changed during aging, it may just be normal variation. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look at that. So I have 32 blood tests for homocysteine since 2005. And we can see that when putting that line at 10 micromolar, I've had several recent values too of homocysteine at about 10 micromolar without additional B6, B12, or folate. So from these data, it's possible that 10.1 micromolar could just be normal variation. So it's hard to say if this was progress or just normal variation. Now, in an upcoming video, we'll see that the combination of serine plus vitamin B6 did not have a major impact on any of my, uh, my other blood biomarkers. So with that in mind, for blood test number four in 2023, which will be in June, sometime in mid to late June, will further increasing serine and vitamin B6. So I intend on doubling my serine intake to four grams per day and tripling my B6 intake to 30 milligrams per day, 10X higher than where I started at about three milligrams per day. Will that combination reduce homocysteine? So if you're interested in that video, check it out at sometime uh, in late June, early July. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all the other discount links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.